Good morning. It is a snowy Saturday morning and we decided, by we I mean myself and head chef Juliet, who has run away from the camera. Oh, <laughs> We're going to roast some vegetables today. Our moms will be so proud of us. Most of these we don't know what to do with, so yeah. we will Google and we will let you know. Tune in. I don't know how this vlog will turn out already. <laughs> First up, we have celery root, which is not technically a root. It's a swollen base of stems that form a round, knobby mass. While raw celery has a crunchy, stringy texture that's high in water, celery root gains a mellow sweetness when cooked. It's high in vitamin K, containing about 34% of the recommended daily value. Per serving, this vegetable has 42 calories, 9 grams of carbs, and almost 2 grams of dietary fiber. It can also step in for potatoes in some recipes to make a low-carb version. The artichoke is actually the bud of a flower. The leaves cover a fuzzy center called the choke, which sits on top of an edible core called the heart. All but the innermost leaves are tough, and you have to scrape them with your teeth to eat the tender parts. I was surprised just how much larger artichoke debris is in relation to the parts you actually eat. This vegetable grows up to 2 meters tall. The total antioxidant capacity of artichoke flower heads is one of the highest reported for vegetables. The white turnip is a root vegetable commonly grown in cold weather or temperate climates. Food shortages during the World Wars resulted in many European civilians living almost wholly on turnips. In fact, the German winter of 1916 is known as the turnip winter. For Romans, the turnip was the weapon of choice to hurl at unpopular public figures. Throughout their long and lumpish history, they've grown to symbolize resilience and firmness, and for this reason, are used in armorial bearings. As a product of the cruciferous family of vegetables, the turnip is known for its high nutrient count and low caloric content. In one medium-sized turnip, there are approximately 34 calories, 4 grams of fiber, and 1 gram of protein. We're having to... Oh. <laughs> Start over. It's a tea break. Uh, we're both having black tea and Earl Grey tea with some sugar and some soy milk. Right? It's Juliet's recipe. Reduce, reuse, recycle. That's easy to do. How much sugar? That so much? Your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. Reduce, reuse, recycle. I've never heard that version of the song. The more we work together, 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 the more we work together, the happier we'll be. Because your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we work together, the happier we'll be. <laughs> Look how cool this is. It's a you fancy tea bag. Go like that. Wow. And it strains it for you. Isn't that so cool? That's cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Cheers. Cheers. It's probably very hot, but... Oh, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. And since you haven't eaten anything, having a little bit of soy milk is like... Should be good, I think. That's not what you tell the camera, Juliet. Oh. <laughs> Cut it out! <laughs> Almost all of these vegetables were roasted with just olive oil, salt, and freshly ground black pepper. We refrained from adding anything extra because we wanted to preserve their original flavors. Eggplant originated in India and can trace all variations of its name back to southern India. Padanikai in Kannada or Telugu, Katrikai in Tamil, Vardhaninga in Malayalam, and of course, Bengan in Hindi. The fiber, potassium, vitamin C, vitamin B6, and antioxidants in eggplants all support heart health. Aubergine is most commonly purple and is a spongy, absorbent fruit. Yes, a fruit. So I guess the word vegetables in the title of this video was clickbait. Hashtag sorry not sorry. A unique part of the endive story is how it's grown. It's grown from a seed, dug up, and then prepped to be rerooted in a dark, cool, and humid room for a final growth period before harvest. Endives are rich in folate, vitamins A and K, and is high in fiber. And next we have bok choy, which is also an excellent source of dietary fiber and is a staple side dish in many Asian cuisines. In fact, one cup of baby bok choy gives you about 60% of your daily requirement of vitamin A. The Florence fennel bulbs are low calorie and infuses a highly aromatic and refreshing flavor to your dishes. They also have an excellent level of potassium, the heart-friendly electrolyte. 
fennel has some noteworthy essential oils, antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals that have been known to offer both culinary and medicinal benefits. We used it in the yogurt dip here with garlic, fresh lemon juice, and salt. So ready. We've okay. been cooking for like three hours. So we have roasted baby bok choy, endives, eggplant, celery root, which I'm quite excited for. This is the turnip actually. Yeah. Turnip. <laughs> this is the celery root over here. We've got some zucchini, zucchini in the middle. Zucchini, different types of cauliflower, and artichoke. What are we trying first? I think we should do an official celery root and then the turnip. Okay. Because we've been kind of tasting it throughout the cooking process. Celery root. Cheers. Cheers. It's so good. We've been trying a little bit here and there, so we did cheat a little, mm -hmm. but this has been the highlight of everything we've made. Totally. If you are low carb or something and you miss potatoes, this is a great option. Of course it does have like its own taste, celery root has a very celery kind of taste, but the texture is amazing, it's so good. Yeah, this is your potato substitute. And then the next is the turnip. turnip. Okay. It's still very potato-y, in my opinion. It is, it's just really soft, mm -hmm. and it holds more water. Mm -hmm. In the same way that there are like different kinds of potatoes. You know? <laughs> I can't take myself seriously. <laughs> this is my element, I love talking about food. <laughs> She's good at this, so any reviews, you should really listen to her. I would say definitely the turnip is kind of like a watery kind of potato, and it has a slight spice, like radishes. Next, eggplant? Yeah, it's not new to either of us, but yeah. So we did roast it with Parmesan cheese, so mm -hmm. maybe that made a difference. Mm -hmm. mm. I think it was cooked enough. I think the highlight for me is like when the oil went in between where we seared it. Yeah. A normal eggplant. Classic assist. eggplant, yeah. Classic eggplant. Next, endive? Yeah, sure. Which we cooked for less than everything else because it's quite a delicate vegetable, so it doesn't need as long to cook. It's really bitter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it tastes like, um, how do you say karela in, in English? Um, bitter gourd? Bitter gourd. Okay, I don't, it's like yeah. the leafy version of that. Yeah, it's bitter. Um, I don't know if it would be less bitter if we cooked it for longer. It might, it might be better with some of the Greek yogurt dip. Oh, that's yeah, true. So. We made a Greek yogurt dip. Do you want to tell them what's in it? Yes. So it has... You're so excited to yeah. that. <laughs> it has very finely chopped fennel and... Let me get the camera. YouTuber thing. Um, <laughs> it has fennel, some dill, both raw garlic and roasted garlic, salt, lemon, Greek yogurt, a little bit of olive oil. That's it. Let's clear our palate <laughs> with some lemon water. Next, bok choy. Yes. I haven't had bok choy before. It's good. It's good. It has kind of like a mustard greens kind of taste. Both the bok choy and the endive will taste really good with this dip. With the dip. Should we try it already? I'm just gonna put some on my plate. Would you like some? Thank you. Or anywhere. <laughs> Give the endive another shot. The dip is good. Mm -hmm. The endive is good because the dip is good. <laughs> okay, what's next? Romanesco. Romanesco. So fun fact about this vegetable, it has like a very interesting appearance if you look very closely at it it has a fractal pattern which means it's like repeating itself so it ends in a perfect little spiral mathematics yes and it was used as a um, in the most recent star wars movie there was a scene where some characters that were like dining or something and they used this to look like a very like space you know futuristic kind of vegetable so okay i thought that was kind of funny Broccoli mixed with cauliflower. Oh my god! Wow! Speaking of cauliflower. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do think it tastes different than normal white cauliflower. I can't parse it to be honest. <laughs> I think it tastes different from a romanesco. Or I should try orange. Nothing different. Tastes the same, but it's more appealing to the eyes. There's something to be said about having a variety of visually appealing vegetables, so. They say you eat with your eyes before you eat yeah. with your mouth. Do you like broccoli or cauliflower? Which made it too broccoli, because that has more flavor. 
Oh, we have a green cauliflower too. I almost mm. forgot about this little guy. Actually, I already ate that one because I thought it was gonna be good. But it tastes the same. Spoiler alert. So you're telling me the green, orange cauliflower and the purple cauliflower, the purple cauliflower all taste like cauliflower. Yeah. Revolutionary. <laughs> yeah. Did we try the zucchini? The burst of moisture in your mouth when you have the mm -hmm. zucchini. It's definitely the most hydrating vegetable, yeah. but flavor-wise, super bland. Now, can we try what I'm most excited to taste? But I do think there is like a special way you're supposed to eat artichokes. I'm gonna Google that. BRB, let's actually make a cut over here. <laughs> a few moments later. So it says the edible part is located at the base of the petal. Hold the base of the petal through slightly clenched teeth to strip off this the petal. sounds too complicated. From out here as well? No, that can't be. No, I've tried it's not edible. Mm -hmm. There's no, yeah. I mean, we don't know what we're doing. We don't. So we'll, what we'll part is edible? Small. It's literally like this. Someone who knows how to eat artichokes will be watching this and laughing at us. I'm sure it was a learning curve for them too, because no one looks at this and intuitively knows how to eat it. Like I'm, I'm having fun just pulling the petals off. It's like the heart of the artichoke, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what does it taste like? Artichoke. I mean, I've had artichoke before. Okay, I've never had it before. Oh really? Like not like pickles? It's good. I like it, right? I'm trying to put a framework around it. Like, what does it taste like? like? What does it taste like? I don't know. That would probably be easier for me to do if this was my first time eating it at all. I will say that roasted, it has more subtle flavor than the pickled one. I do get the subtle eggplant taste. It reminds me a little bit of drumstick. Have you ever had drumstick? It's like this long vegetable. Never had that. I don't know if there's a different word for it, but the outside is not mm -hmm. edible, but the inside is very fleshy and it tastes really good. So you basically scrape the flesh out, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. now. I will say it looks aesthetic, but I don't think you're missing out on much if you're not eating it. <laughs> Overall right. thoughts? I think this was a really fun experiment for its success. Our thought process for this roast was to get vegetables we haven't really eaten before and put them all into the oven. It's a good experiment. It's a good date night idea. <laughs> <laughs> the artichoke might be a good thing if you're having guests and you want to impress. It does look very aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, and pot. Any food that you have to tell your guests, okay, so this is how you eat it, is like, to me, a fancy food. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Much, much, much later. I'm chewing. Nothing is happening. <laughs> it's not a bad vegetable, but if I met someone, I asked them, oh, what's your favorite vegetable? And they said artichoke. I would say, <laughs> why? What's wrong with you? Have you ever been to an interview and they ask you, if you could be a building, what building would you be? God, what is a, what is a good answer to that question? You know, so, I was asked that question for a job at my undergrad. Mm. So I said, I would be my university library. Brown noser. <laughs> I said library because I like reading and I like being in pursuit of knowledge right. and you know made something up like that. And I said university library because I wanted to show campus spirit. I got hired, but it was a bullshit answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's kind of a bullshit question. That sounds like one of the things they throw in just so that they can laugh at people's answers. Questions like this, they throw in because they want to know how you answer. Yeah. And the answer doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's true. That's like, um, what is your biggest weakness? I got asked that question mm -hmm. once. It's good to give an answer that it is a real flaw, but not necessarily in the context of what you're gonna be doing. So if you're applying for some sort of event management job and you say, oh, my, my biggest flaw is probably that I'm really disorganized and I never get to places on time. That is a terrible answer because that's super relevant to the job. If you're doing a job where you're mostly gonna be working alone, you might say something like, I sometimes have a hard time, you know, working in group settings, but I've been mm -hmm. working on that. There you go. You're learning about vegetables and about how to succeed at interviews. <laughs> I have to spit this out because this is not going anywhere. <laughs>